Hi guys. I want to be fun to be known, bro. A couple of things right now. Um, some of you were supposed to come this morning to take your review quiz. Um, we didn't do that, so we're gonna go with that right now. Yeah. Um, so, because some of these might pop up on your test, depending on which version you get. Wait, can you run through one more time? What's gonna, so the test tomorrow is gonna be multiple choice, and then there's gonna be. And you have a SCOTUS, and you have an essay. We have a question on that? All right, if the president has objections, go ahead and read the board for me, please. If the president has objections to some provisions of a bill passed by Congress, which of the following can the president utilize to reject those provisions without having to risk a veto override from Congress? So if, he, if there's a bill and there's some parts of it that he doesn't like, um, but he doesn't want to risk Congress overriding his veto, he doesn't want to veto the whole thing, what can he use? Sign he's sign. What else can he do? He can do a pocket veto, right? All right, next. Which of these are true of the leadership structure in Congress? The committee chairs are chosen based on age. Is that true? No. It's not true. It's You're chosen based on, on what? Term. On the longest term, and you have to be from the majority party. That's called the seniority system. Next, the Speaker of the House has, has very little authority over the members of the majority party in the House of Representatives. Oh, That's they true. have all authority. No, the Speaker of the House is very powerful. Well, he's the most powerful man in Congress. He's certainly the most powerful man in the House of Representatives. Next, the Vice President often dictates the agenda in the Senate. No. No, we know that he doesn't really he have a lot of power. He just shows up when there's a tie. The majority minority leaders often work together to make sure legislation being passed have no. bipartisan support. That's a big no. They don't even like each other. Sometimes they don't like each other, right? They don't care whether or not the other party wants the bill to pass. Sometimes they try to cram it down each other's throat, right? Republicans will do that to the Democrats. Democrats will do that to the Republicans. They don't really care about cooperation all that much, these two parties. So the correct answer would be the majority leaders in both houses coordinate strategy to meet the parties. So if you're the Republican leader in the House and you're the Republican leader in the Senate, your job is to get together, coordinate strategy to get what your party wants through. Whether that be pa passing a bill or maybe failing a bill, same thing with the Democrats and same thing with the Republicans. Those leaders will try to get together and coordinate a strategy. Anybody have any questions? Does everybody realize or remember the leadership structure in Congress? Because this might pop up on your test tomorrow. Let's go to the House of Representatives. Who's the top dog? The Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House. Below him are the what? The, the party the leaders. Majority leaders and minority, minority leaders. leaders. Below them are? Whips. 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 Same thing in the Senate. Only to replace the Speaker of the House with what? The Vice President. The Vice President. He doesn't really have power. There's a President pro tem that temporarily replaces the, pre the Vice President when he's out. Anybody have any questions? All right. When is the president most likely to get Congress to pursue his policy agenda? When he's the most popular, right? When people are, and that's when? Beginning, the beginning of his first term. term. All right, a lot of people miss this one. Check four that applies. Which of these constitutional checks Congress has to limit the Supreme Court? Can Congress enforce term limits on just no. the Supreme you know they don't have term limits, right? Yes. They get to be there for how long? Life. For life. And if Congress wanted term limits, well, what does Congress have to do? They have to, to propose and ratify. They have to propose an amendment and then have it ratified, right? Yes. That they will have, that's going to be impossible usually. Replace the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court with someone with whom a majority, a majority party Congress ideally no, aligns with. No, they can't with. do that. Well, it's too difficult to. If they can't do that, why? Because they, you don't fire judges or justices, they get appointed. What's the only way in which you can actually impeach? Die, impeach, or retire? Yes, sir. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I was asking about, I was asking about the morning, tomorrow morning. Do we have to? Sorry? Do we have to? Yes. All right. Change the size of the Supreme Court. Can Congress do that? Yes. Congress yes. can do that. Remember what FDR tried to do? He tried to um, get Congress to increase the size of the Supreme Court. That Congress can do that. Next, overruling the Supreme Court's decision by two thirds in Congress. Can Congress do that? No. Congress cannot overrule Supreme Court decisions. If they don't like the Supreme Court decision, the President and Congress can do very little about it. 
There's a lot of people in Congress that didn't like Roe versus Wade, but there's nothing Congress can really do about it. What's the only thing that they can do about it? To change, I mean, they to, can pass, to pass laws, laws that would what? That limits That would the weaken impact. it and limit the impact of the case, but they can't do anything to overturn the case. Who can overturn Supreme Court decisions? No one. No one except for who? The president. Except themselves. Oh, yeah. Right? Plessy versus Ferguson, overturned by what? Brown versus Brown Board versus Board of Education. All right. Can Congress ratify Congress? No, Congress they propose. They, so this is wrong. This is correct. Can they refuse a confirmation of the president of, to the federal courts? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Can they reduce the pay? No. no. Can they pass legislation that would limit the impact of the Supreme yes. Court? Yes. Yes, they can. Anybody confused by any of them? Wait, did we have four? Sorry? There should be four there. When President Ronald Reagan issued. Tomorrow morning. Okay. When President Ronald Reagan issued a speech about his proposed tax cuts in front of the American public, what is he trying to do? He's using the bully pulpit. He's using the bully pulpit. Whenever presidents do speeches, uh, whenever they appear in front of TV, they're using the, um, the, the platform given to them just by being President of the United States. All right, so guys, these, when they ask you about his formal, which are constitutional powers, and his informal powers, which are not necessarily in the Constitution, but maybe reason to be implied by the Constitution, what I do is I remember the five informal powers, and the rest of the President's powers are in the Constitution. Make sense? Yes. So just memorize the five. Executive order. What else? Executive agreements. Executive agreements. What else? Pocket veto. Pocket veto is, oh, wait, wait, wait. is in the bully Constitution. Pulpit. Pocket veto is in the Constitution. Wait, wait, wait. The, the use of the bully pulpit, that's yeah. not in the Constitution of the United States. Him using the, his, uh, his platform. So, executive order, executive agreement, bully. the use of the bully pulpit. Signing, Signing statements. Signing statements are not in the Constitution. Most of the presidents in the very beginning didn't do signing statements because that's not really in the Constitution. What else? So, we're private. Uh, Persuasion would be bully pulpit, usually. It's the last one. It has to do with foreign affairs. Uh, it's not an executive agreement. We already did the executive agreement. You can send troops without what? Uh, without congressional uh, war or declaration of war. So those five, if you remember them, the rest of the president's powers would be formal. Make sense? Mm -hmm. This might be on your test, so make sure that you know this. So vetoing legislation, formal and informal. That would be formal. Bully pulpit, formal or informal? Informal. Informal. Pocket veto, Marco. What is formal. It? That would be formal. That is in the Constitution of the United States. Uh, appointing heads of agencies? Formal. formal. That's formal. Signing executive statements? Informal. informal. Okay, agreements, I'm sorry. That would be informal. Signing statements would informal. be informal also. Acting as commander in chief? Formal. That would be formal. Easy. So everybody good with 70 and 78? 70 is about which branch? The president. The, president. the fact that he's the only one there, and 78 is about the Supreme Court. Judicial branch, and how they're what? They're, they're independent. independent. How there's no outside pressure that can force them to decide one way or another. So, obviously, single executive, single executive, that would be what? 70. 70, federal judges, federal judiciary, so that would be 70. You can remember Some of you could have just gotten 100 if you showed up this morning. You could have remembered by the second article, right, and the third article? Yes, exactly. Okay. Which, are the best, which of these best describes the role of presidents? Right. P-R-E-C-E-D-N-T-S, presidents. Which one of these best describes what presidents are? B, to pass rulings. Pass presidents rulings. pass. That judges of the federal courts, they take pass rulings of the past, and they apply them to similar cases. What's another word for that when you use presidents? Sorry, no. decided. Everybody good? That's why all the cases that we talked about in this class are important. Not because of what happened in that case, but because it's going to matter in the future. Roe versus Wade, Matt versus Ohio, all those cases matter because they establish presidents that matter to us now, even today, and even in the future. All right. So congressional behavior, let's go along with me. You need to identify what they're doing. A senator changes legislation, a law, to fund construction of roads in his home state. 
to create jobs in his home state. So he's changing a legislation and adding funding for roads. That would be pork barrel and earmarks. Anybody that I get that? If, if you don't, let me know. But I thought that was for um, another senator doing that to benefit another senator. Well, as a senator, right, I can say, you know what, we, we can change, change that legislation. I'll change that, that legislation to offer my constituents benefits. So I would say yes to that bill. Anybody can uh, suggest amendments to uh, legislation. So even you yourself can say, you know what, I want a pork barrel for my, for my constituents in there. All right, congressmen in the House are changing support for each other's bills. Log rolling. Log rolling. Log rolling. A member of Congress voting against a popular federal program because it doesn't agree with what he believes. Trustee. Trustee or delegate? Trustee. Trustee. This is him ignoring the people and going by his own convictions, right? This is him going against something that's popular and going against, uh, going for his own convictions. So, trustee, trust me? Exactly. Okay. That's how I remember it. Senator Clark votes her conscience on bills that her constituents care little about, but she votes according to the wishes of the majority of her constituents on other bills. Political. It's political, because she's doing what? Both. She's doing both. Anybody have a question? No. All right. Let's go over some things that might pop up on the test, which are cases. Decided, and you need to know what constitutional clauses or provisions are involved in each one of the cases. Angle versus Italia, Supreme Court ruled that what kind of prayer is not allowed? Uh, state school sponsored, state sponsored, government sponsored prayer not allowed. Why not? It would be against which clause of the First Amendment? Establishment, establishment clause. What does the establishment clause do? It creates a wall of separation between what? Government, government and religion, church and state, right? Make sense? Yes. All right. In Wisconsin versus Yoder, the Supreme Court ruled against a Wisconsin law that would force students, Amish students, uh, to go to what? School. Go to school past the eighth grade. What's the clause? Free exercise clause. Free exercise clause. The Supreme Court said that stopping, um, making Wisconsin um, Amish students go past the eighth grade would be violating their free exercise of <coughs> That would, that would be the government interfering with their uh, practice of their religion. As part of the First Amendment, Yes, First Amendment. Free exercise and establishment are the pillars of our freedom of religion here in the United States. Thinker versus Des Moines, what is protected by freedom of speech? Symbolic, Symbolic speech. speech. Symbolic speech. So if Jesus, for example, tomorrow wears a t-shirt that says Trump sucks, then that would be okay that would be symbolic or political speech and under this case that is protected by the First Amendment. Schneck versus the United States, what is not protected by freedom of speech? Uh, speech that presents a clear present danger. Speech that presents a clear and present danger can be regulated, can be stopped by the government, they can make laws against that if it presents a clear and present danger. All right, this one I know a lot of you probably forgot already. This is about Nixon and the Pentagon Papers. Nixon was trying to censor the Pentagon Papers from coming out, but we talked about in this class, the, what is the one rule when it comes to freedom of the press? No what? Prior no prior restraint. No censorship before expression is made. Did the Supreme Court upheld no prior restraint here? Yes. Or did they go against no prior restraint? They upheld prior they restraint. Upheld. They said there is a heavier burden of proof to go against no prior restraint. What provision of, this, of the Bill of Rights? Freedom of what? Freedom of the press. 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 You can put speech also, but it's usually freedom of the press. Freedom of the press here. McGall versus Chicago, this is one of your selective incorporation cases where one thing in the Bill of Rights was applied to the state. Second, Second Amendment. Amendment. 
Don't just put Second Amendment, guys. So right second Amendment right to bear arms. Right to bear arms. Because there's two things in the Second Amendment, right to bear arms and the right to form a militia. So the right to bear arms was incorporated to the states. Gideon v. Wainwright was the same thing. Something in the Bill of Rights incorporated to the states finally. Anybody remember what it was? Incorporated the right to a right to a council, right to a lawyer was incorporated to the states. Sixth Amendment, yes. Roe v. Wade legalized what? Abortion. Abortion. What was used? The freedom. The right to privacy. All right. I know some of you don't remember what clause. There's many different amendments in the in, in the Bill of Rights that implies that we have the right to privacy, but in this particular case, the Supreme Court used a special one. Close. It is the 14th. But what about the 14th? What about the due process clause? No state can deny life, liberty, liberty, and property without due process of law. What did they use there? No state can deny life, liberty, and property without due process. They use this one right here. They said the liberty guarantee or the due process clause implies that right to part of your liberty is the right to what? Privacy. Right to privacy. privacy. And that legalized abortion in the United States, at least for what, which semester? For the first trimester. So this is one of the examples of um, the Supreme Court trying to strike a balance between government interests and, uh, and your civil liberties. They favored civil liberties, at least for the first semester, trimester, but then in the subsequent, the following trimester, they allowed government to regulate that. Like Texas, for example, um, it is illegal to have um, an abortion in the third trimester. The Supreme Court allowed that. All right, Brown v. Board of Education, give me the clause. The 14th. 14th. 14th, uh, 14th what? Equal, equal protection, equal protection clause. clause. What is the equal protection clause who forbids the states from doing what? Discrimination. Discrimination. Everybody good? A lot of you um, in this class, based on the homework that you've been giving me, do not know the result, the impact of Brown versus Board of Education. So you know it's about segregation, right? A lot of you say that it ended segregation in the United States. That is factually not true. Correct. It, it's ended or made segregation in what sphere? In public, in public education. education. But it's still okay to segregate people in restaurants. It's still okay to segregate people in hospitals after Brown versus Board of Education. What made it not okay to do that? Civil Rights Act. Civil Rights Act of 1965. Anybody have any questions before we move on? All right. So the two cases that are always partnered up are Shaw versus Reno and what? Baker, Baker, Baker versus Carr. Carr. It's about redistricting. It's about gerrymandering. Which one's about race? Shaw, Shaw versus Shaw. Reno. Baker um, is about um, you need to have an equal, approximately equal amount of population in each district. One person, one what? One person, one vote. One vote. What clauses? What clause for both of these? The Fourteenth Amendment due process. I mean, due process. Right. Equal protection. Equal protection. All right. Again, think about what's going on in each case. In each case, a person complains that what what's happening to him. Being yeah. discriminated upon by a state by the way they're drawing these lines. So what clause? So you go protection clause in both of these. Make sense? Yes. In Baker versus Carr, the guy was complaining that his vote doesn't count as much as another guy in another district's vote. In this case, a white person was complaining that um, they made an exclusively black district to have a minority majority district. So it's all about discrimination from the state, so equal protection clause. Citizens so United versus the FEC, everybody good with that? It allowed for the creation of what kind of PACs? Super PACs. Super PACs. So uh, an organization that can spend how much money? Unlimited. Unlimited amounts of money. For corporations, labor unions. What clause? The. Some of you got this wrong on your test. This one's easy, guys. What clause? It's okay to spend as much money as you want because spending money is what? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. When you give somebody money, you're giving, you're expressing your support towards that person. So freedom of speech in, in Citizens United versus FEC. These two right here. Commerce. Pay very attention. These two right here 
are about the relationship between who and who? State, state, state and national government. What do we call that? Federalism. federalism. This is about federalism. In which case did the Supreme Court side with the federal government? Republicans. And then U.S. versus Lopez state. with these states. So the relationship between the two has always been evolving. It's always flexible. Barber versus Madison, hopefully everybody knows. Judicial review. The ability of the federal court to determine whether or not something is constitutional or unconstitutional. Anyone have any questions? So all of these are going to be on the final? No. Well, you don't know. What's going on, so you need to be ready for all of them. They used to? McCollum versus Maryland, they said that the Supreme Court has implied powers, that's why they were, I'm sorry, Congress has implied powers, that's why they will be able to make the National Bank, you should know what clause is that, implied powers, necessary and what, necessary and proper clause, and the second one is the supremacy clause, federal law is supreme over state law. Alright, a couple of things that might be on your, the version of your test, but Congress, pass this legislation, let's say this legislation is about the environment, and they want to lower down the, the amount of carbon emissions, what do they do next? They send legislation to the executive branch. That legislation, the responsibility of meeting that legislation's goal is given to a what? To a federal bureaucracy. To a federal bureaucracy. In this case, who would they probably give the it to? EPA. EPA. And what kind of authority does the EPA have in order to meet the goal of that law? All authority. They have rulemaking authority, which means they can make what? They can make laws to, or regulations. Regulations that carry the force of law. They can make regulations like, if you're a car company, you can't um, have mufflers this size, so that it would reduce pollution. I don't know if that's really the case, but, no. but that's a regulation. What else? Discretionary. They have discretionary authority. They have some leeway in trying to implement that legislation. So they have two, rulemaking. And they have discretionary authority also. So they, for most bureaucracies. So if it was a, a legislation about food and drugs, then the FDA would have. Anybody have questions on that? All right. Um, a lot of you don't know the difference between an amendment and a legislation. Oh my goodness. Legislation is what? It's a law. It's passed by who? By Congress. Congress. By Congress. Signed by who? The President of the United States. If somebody complains about that law, they can bring it up to who? To the Supreme Court. Court. The Supreme Court. The Supreme Court can say what? Yes. It's, it's unconstitutional. They can rule that unconstitutional. Everybody good? Yes. Do, does the Supreme Court review laws regularly? No. No, they don't. They only get to look at it when somebody what? When somebody complains. When somebody complains about it, right? They don't check Congress's law every day, for example. Everybody go with that? Yes. What are amendments? Changes, Changes, Changes to the Constitution. Constitution of the United States, not legislation. Oh. Well, it could be an amendment an to amend a law, right? Law, so. Well, in this particular case, amendments, I mean amendments to the Constitution. Changes to the Constitution. And how do we do, how do we add changes to the Constitution? Two-thirds of both houses. houses. Two-thirds from Congress, two-thirds from the states, or and, and three-fourths of the states. Three-fourths of the states. Are we good? Two, three, three. Article 5. Oh, a couple of things. Give me some amendments and legislation that expanded suffrage in the United States. The 19th what? 19th is for? Women. Women, what else? The 15th Amendment. 15th Amendment. To, for black Male, women. every male. Oh, what else? The, um, the 26. Which lowered voting age to? 18. 18. 18. What else? And does the voting rights There's act? another amendment. Hold on. It's another amendment. 24th. 24th. What's the 24th amendment? Uh, uh, That's the 17th. Oh. Uh, 24th. Poll tax. Poll tax. tax. They got rid of poll tax. Yeah. Depending on the question, or the version, you might have that. Or you should remember 24th amendment. 24th. That's a freebie right there. Um, Give me legislation that improves voter turnout. The Voting Rights Act. The Voting Rights Act, which eliminated anything that would make it difficult for who? For minorities. minorities to vote. There's another one. Motor Voter Law, or the Motor Voter Act, which allowed drivers to do what while they're applying? Register and apply for a driver's license. Easy. This is very infrequent. What do you mean? Well, like. 
It's very convenient. Oh, well, it's convenient, but it's very infrequent. Like, you don't always go. Really well, everybody will have to do it. Well, mostly everybody in the United States will have to get a driver's license. Oh, yeah, right? but not all the time. Really. That's true. All right, uh, make sure you know polling types, types of polling that are out there. There's a benchmark poll, which that's the start of things. They can do a benchmark poll so that they can compare um, later results to it. What's the one that we do over time? Tracking poll. A tracking poll. Uh, which ones are done after somebody votes or before somebody votes? Exit polls or entrance polls? You need to know in this class, and this might be on one of your FRQs, uh, how a poll becomes scientific and accurate. Give me some stinks. Not all polls are the same. Some polls are BS. You need to, you need to have good methods. Random sampling. That's the most important one. Number of participants. The number of people in the sample. Um, what else? The type of what? The type of question. The type of questioning that you ask unbiased. in the polls. That has to be unbiased. A representative sample. If you are trying to figure out, for example, what African American thinks about um, kneeling down during um, during the Pledge of Allegiance or um, the national, national anthem, anthem, for example, should you ask a white female? No, no, because she's not representative of your sample. Oh, uh, your population. I'm sorry. Everybody, go with that. Yeah. All right. What is uh, public opinion? It's how the public feels about a candidate or an issue. So how a public feels about a certain issue, about a certain candidate. If, for example, there was a poll that says 20% of Americans love Donald Trump, that would be public opinion. Or 80% of people support gay marriage, that would be public opinion. That's for everybody, for a population. Not for everybody, but for a certain population. Um, what's the difference between public opinion and political ideology? Political ideology is ideology. Political ideology, ideology refers to a what? An individual set of beliefs, his opinions about government. This might be a test. How do you acquire your political ideology? From your family. Sure. Family is a big factor for that. Political socialization. There you go. You need to remember that word, political socialization. The process in which somebody acquires his beliefs, his opinions, What's the most important factor in your political socialization? Family. Your family is the most important factor. What else is a factor? Your friends. Your friends, media, what else? Education. Education. Some of you here that would fail the AP exam, you're going to have another government teacher in college. And he might convince you to become more liberal. He might convince you to become more conservative. Your opinions might change. That's political socialization. So the, the process in which you acquire beliefs, opinions about government and about politics. Anybody have any questions so far? All right, tell me if this is protected by the First Amendment or not protected by the First Amendment. Fighting words. Not protected, protected or not protected? Not protected. No. not protected. Government can stop that from happening. Government can punish you for threatening somebody. How about the right of a student to pray? Protected, protected or not protected? That's protected. That is protected. What is not protected? When the prayer is what? School sponsor. Right? But you can pray by yourself if you want to. Um, that would be protected by the First Amendment. Um, libel and slander. Is that protected or unprotected? Yes, that is protected. Oh, that is not protected. It's not protected. It's not protected. Um, if you talk bad about somebody that can injure their reputation, government can come after you for that. Obscenity, something overtly sexual. No, that is, no, that is not that protected. Is, That's why Marco's not naked, for example. Yeah. Because government can regulate that. It's not protected by your First Amendment. All right. Finally today, guys, make sure you have a lot to study for. Yeah, yeah that's I apologize true. for that, but you, you should be studying the whole week. Fourteenth <laughs> Amendment has two clauses. Give me the two clauses. E -P -C, e -P -C. E -P -C. Oh, potential clause, due process clause. Both of them are used to limit who? Which government? State. State government. EPC is used to limit the state government how? Preventing them for doing what? Discriminating. Discriminating on its own citizens. Whenever a state tries to discriminate on somebody, somebody can bring up the equal protection clause and try to stop that from happening. That's what happened in Brown versus Board of Education. That's what happened in Shaw versus Reno and in Baker versus Carr. Equal protection clause. Pretty good? 
right. Due process clause, what does it allow? How does it limit the states? It enforces the, the amendments. It enforces the Bill of Rights to who? To the states. states. In a process that we call what? Selective Incorporation. Incorporation. Not all of the Bill of Rights, but one by one, each right or each liberty will be applied to the Bill of Rights of the United States. Anybody here forgot the difference between civil liberties and civil rights? Civil liberties are found in the Constitution. Protection from the government. They're found in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. But civil rights are also found, some of them are also found in the Constitution. What civil rights do? Protection from? From other people. From government what? Discrimination. Government discrimination. Anybody have any questions on that? So for example, First Amendment. Would that be protecting your civil liberty, or would that be protecting your civil rights? Civil liberty. Civil liberties. How about the 14th Equal Protection Clause? Civil, civil rights. Because rights. Rights, right. it protects you from government discrimination. Anyone have any questions? No. Yeah, they got so pissed off this weekend. I did too. Should yeah, you. there's no Eight people came, so they decided to shower them with points. Dang. So there was no question. Oh, yeah. There was a prep session? Yeah, for, for Saturday? Yeah, there was multiple prep sessions. I could have gone. I was gardening. <laughs> Alright. Um, what else do I need to tell you about? So, when are you going to shower some points? Alright, we're going to check your binders in a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, guys, I'll be here in the morning. So, the final questions about your tests, I'll be here for you. I don't know if I'll be here to school. No, I don't think so. We, we reviewed some, um, something. I'm forgetting, I'm just forgetting in this class. All right. If you, in a little bit, I'm going to be asking those of you that need me to check some stuff that you may have done over the weekend to write your name down. Once I provide the paper, just remind me later on. Write your name down on a piece of paper and then tell me which assignment you need me to grade um, so that I can fix your grade. Check your scoured. If there's anything wrong with it, then you need to let me know about it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna change. Hold on. Who's missing right now? What the heck? All right, so um, those of you I told my third period this, but this pertains to the people that have the three highest grades in this class. And that would be Jesus. I swear Marco. On that list. Okay. And Elizabeth. I told Elizabeth about this already. Tomorrow during a test, you have two options. Right? So I'm gonna reward you for doing well the whole year. Um, you have two options, one of them is selfish, one of them is altruistic. I'm not gonna judge you, whichever one you choose. All right, so tomorrow, if you are confused about two questions and you don't know which answer choice to pick on the multiple choice section, right? You can tell me which two choices are you thinking about, and I can eliminate one of those questions, one of those answer choices for two questions for you. All right? Or, it's one question, you get to choose which question, right? But I get to tell everybody. Oh, Marco. Oh, Marco. All right, guys, you a pitch in a dollar, and I'll give the second option. No, no, no. All right, so if all three of you decide not to be selfish, it would be three questions for the whole class. However, his question that he chose, might, you might know the answer to it already, so it might be useless for you. Yeah, that's the problem. Right? So it's about individual liberty, responsibility, group responsibility. You shouldn't even be thinking about it. All right, so here's what I want to do, guys, for your binder. Your binder is not going to hurt anybody who hasn't done it. It's just to reward people who have maintained their binder. If you know you're missing lessons, then don't even bother. You're wasting my time. Okay? If you're missing lessons, don't worry about it. Sit tight. Anybody have any questions? How do you know I was like, checking Sorry? How do you know you were checking binders? Why, well, you don't have your binary with you? No. It's okay, it's bonus points. What? What is now helping you? Try tomorrow, give it to me when, tomorrow morning, but I can't promise you anything. I don't know if it's going to close or not. Alright, um, anybody 
Okay, and then what I want you to do is give it to somebody who also has their binder. Exchange it to someone who has the binder also. This is just going to be an extra 100 on a test grade, guys. An extra 100 on a test grade. Wait, I'm going to make what an assignment and it's gonna, you're going to get 100. What if it doesn't help? You won't help me. Sorry? You won't help me. It's not going to help you? Why, why, is, why is it going to help you? That's going to help you. No, but I don't want, I don't want 100. I'm going to do it. Shut up. Shut up. All right, everybody. Everybody good? You change, exchange papers. Yes. All right. Guys, make sure that you're grading their actual binder. If you see another guy's names in there, let me know about it. I'll give you 10 points on the test. Oh, oh. Wait, I'll on this one. All right, so here's all what I want you to do, guys. It doesn't matter if they have blanks, whatever. I just want you to check that they have all the lessons. So for unit one, there's nine lessons. So go through, flip it really quickly. Nine lessons for unit one. Nine lessons for unit one. Flip through it as quickly as you can. What is the reason for Wait, so it doesn't matter if they have links or it doesn't? It doesn't matter. As so long as you have all, all the lessons, lessons. yes. Okay, so I have to see So make, make Marco switch with you. Yeah. All right, once you finish that, lesson, um, unit 12 is a little bit more lengthy. I'm sorry, unit 2, I'm sorry. Unit 2 is 13 lessons. 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 Elizabeth, did Zane borrow your binder and copy it all down? Yeah. So I'll just give him a grade. 13 lessons. Sorry? 13. 13 for Unit 2. 13 for Unit 2. If they have an extra one, that's fine. Some people have 13, some people have 14. has 13 lessons. Unit 3 has 6. Very small unit. Unit 3 has 6. Sure, it's still be allowed tomorrow. No. 
All right, guys. If they have it all complete, if they don't have it all complete, let them know about it. Um, if they have it all complete, I need their names on the paper that says binder. Also, those of you that have something for me to grade, maybe an essay that you've redone, write your name and the name of the assignment. Perfect. Right here, guys. Okay. Yeah, you guys, who has a hundred average right now? Thirty-six. You two, you don't have a hundred. I have ninety-nine. But then, because this is gonna be a hundred. So mine's ninety-nine point. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. And you get a hundred. Yeah, with this, I end up with a hundred. Get a hundred. Yeah, our job. Okay. All right. But you two have a hundred right now. Anybody else have a hundred right now? Sure, I have a seven. All right. So you two, I'll just give you two points on your final. No, I got you guys. I have the I have the paper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got you. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> In the past, you can pass from that person. Yeah. They're just out of order, right? But they're on it. They're on there. Make sure you write their name. They have everything in there. This is a hundred. I'm going to create an assignment. I'll give you a hundred. If you didn't have it, I'll give you the whole thing. Wait, so I don't get the two points? No. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. What are you doing it right? You get 15 points in the test, and then you get depending on the team. That, that's like, I'm not, I'm not over, over 100 points in a quiz. Oh my gosh, I got five. Wait, so did you add? No, I didn't give you a quiz. On the quiz? On the quiz. I think I just got three. 